Well, chances are, if you clicked on this video, you got a Mini Cooper cooling issue, and I'm here to help you out. So stick around. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So first and foremost, the Mini Cooper, especially the, uh, the R56 or any year from 07 to 12, very interesting coolant system. It is the definition of over-engineered. Uh, I've had this car three years this month, holy cow. And the first thing I did is I replaced three of the major four cooling components of the uh, of my Mini behind me, simply because they were failing. The car only had 45,000 miles on it when I obtained it. All the cooling system was shot. So today we're gonna be replacing the expansion tank. Um, it's the last thing that's failed, the seam has failed. And I'll show you when we get to the car. I'm gonna go over all of the failure points on this particular Mini Cooper model. This is, again, this is the 07 to 12. This might help in the margin, some other ones. Yeah, like I said, it's a very unique cooling system and I'm gonna show you where the fail points are, what to replace, and a brief summary of how to replace it. All right, so let's go to the car and we'll go through and at the very end, we'll swap this guy out. Pretty simple. All right, here we are at the engine bay. It's filthy, I do apologize, but we'll start right here with the expansion tank and we'll work our way around to the other components of the cooling system. So I know it's the expansion tank because I have coolant residue right there and along the side of the seams of this guy. And I also know this is the very last thing that is original to the cooling system on my Mini Cooper. And this one can also be the hardest to diagnose because sometimes you get a hairline fracture that's so tiny it just kind of vaporizes and comes out and you can't really see any residue or the leaks are right on the bottom and you don't see any evidence of it. But you know your coolant's starting to, starting to go away and you don't know where it's going. All right, and the next thing is the thermoset housing. It's right here on the side of the block. It's hard to see. Take off both these uh, these tubes. You're gonna take in your fresh air snorkel, take both of these off, and it's right there. I know it's hard to see, but I have a visual aid right here. The one that broke on me. Perfect, right? This goes right up against your block. You got three screws. Boom, boom, boom. Super simple. Um, you got all your routing stuff right here. Yeah, I think total of six. Yeah, six different hoses to your expansion tank, to your crossover tube, to your block, etc. It, lo it looks like a uh, artificial heart. It's crazy. And that's your actual thermostat right there. You cannot replace just this. That's how they get you. You got to get the whole damn thing. And this thing fails very, very often. And again, it goes just like this, about a foot down. Not too bad to get to. And this is your, your temperature sensor right there. I believe it comes with one when you get a new one. Don't quote me on that. But again, this is a knockoff that I bought. It lasted me about four months, and then I had to get an OE replacement. Yeah, these cars are very fickle, and they only like OE replacements. Very, very frustrating, but it is what it is. And it's been, geez, two and a half years on the OE replacement. So all of the components that fail, number one, number two, number three would be your, uh, your water pump, and number four is your expansion tank. And then in between, in the margins, your hoses can fail on occasion. All the hoses are over here, none are over here, which is nice. All right, the next component that's very prone to fail is the crossover tube. And this connects to this little guy right there. When I bought mine, when I replaced mine, it was such a common failure, I bought an extra one just to have it. And underneath your intake manifold, this does have to come off to replace it, but don't let it scare you, it's not too bad. This little guy runs just like this. Once this starts to break, you get a fun little puddle of coolant on your passenger side right underneath your block. And that was my very first thing that broke when I got mine within the first two weeks. Yeah, just kind of a pain. So I was, it was a learning curve for myself as well. I'm like, what the hell is a crossover tube? This, like again, this coolant system is so unique. When it works, it works good. Just the components they use aren't great. This should be a aluminum piece um, or even a steel piece from the factory, in my opinion. But I get you this really cheap plastic that's good for about four years, I feel like, and you gotta replace the damn thing. And uh, getting this guy into your water pump underneath here, it's kind of like where your intake tube is. It's right down in there. And the last thing I can't show you, but I'll show you a graphic, and that is the water pump, which is right down in here on the side of the block. To get to it, jack your car up, take the tire off, take the inside lining off, and you need a stubby ratchet 10 millimeter wrench. Not a socket, it won't reach. It's gotta be a uh, open-end wrench with a ratchet. It'll save your life. 
I believe there's six screws total. Again, if you have little hands, it's easier, but you can reach it from the fender well on the outside. I have done it. And again, there'll be a graphic right here. And another thing interesting about this setup, again, you can't really see it, but I'll explain it to you, is that typically a car will use a belt. There is one serpentine belt on here to run the, uh, the AC accessory. This uses a friction wheel to connect the, the crankshaft to the, the water pump. Very, very interesting. I've never seen that before. It's a spring-loaded friction wheel that to service it, you pull up a little pin. It gives play in the wheel so you can take the water pump off, put the new one on, you release the tension, or put the tension back on, if you will, and then you're all set. It's super interesting. Any questions on that, please let me know. I'll help you out best I can. So yeah, those are the four major components of the cooling system on the R56. Your water pump next to the block right down here in your um, wheel well your crossover tube, which is very unique, your thermostat housing right down there, it looks like an artificial heart, and then your coolant expansion tank, which we're gonna replace right now. Also, if you're doing any coolant work on this guy outside of the expansion tank, you gotta drain the fluid. The Mini Cooper does not have a, a drain cock like most do on the radiator. It's just a hose underneath. Let's see if you can see it from up here. If you wanna drain the system, the Mini Cooper, right down there, see this hose right there? On this side, you disconnect it and you drain it. It's very unconventional, but again, there's there's no drain plug. It's just a hose you disconnect. Right there, there it is. On this side, boop, you see a little connection? Undo it and drain your coolant. But for this job, um, this thing's pretty much empty, so it should be pretty easy. I will put a little uh, a drain pan underneath to catch any fluid. We can put it back in. And you have to use European blue fluid because Mini Cooper. It's a little more expensive, but most auto parts places do carry it. So I'm trying to find a failure point. I'm pretty sure it was the, uh, the seam. It's pretty common. You see it kind of coming down, dripping right here. Yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah, just enough. When it expands, I'm sure it's when it does it. Frustrating. The front little guy here doesn't go anywhere, so don't freak out about that. So. This is pretty gross. So yeah, this thing's, geez, 14 years old. So I got my life out of it. I get, yeah, I guess I have two hoses. Boom, boom, you're all set. Oh, and also, if you're doing this job, don't forget to relocate this little adapter deal on the bottom of your expansion tank. Right there. Boom. I don't know what the need for it is, but your hose goes on that instead of that. So, just so you know. Also, side note, one of these hose clamp wrenches are freaking amazing. I got this at, I don't know, some parts store a while ago. It's ratcheting. You put it on the hose clamp and it holds it in place so you can slip it right off. I love it. All right, now we're just going to fill it up to the fill line right underneath the seam. We're all set. And again, this is that super fancy stuff I was talking about. European vehicles, blue. I don't know why it's different exactly. I don't know, but Mini requires it. And uh, so does BMW. All right, there we go. Now, once you fill this up, there's gonna be air in the system. There always is when you do anything like this. And um, the engine is cold right now. When it gets hot, it'll expand a little more. So don't fill it up cold at the top, it'll blow up. So leave it right there, check it in a couple days. When it's cold, if you gotta add a little more, just add a little more. So there you go. Hopefully I helped someone out there with a question. And if you have more questions, please let me know down below. You know, for a car that has such weird, unique cooling issues and tends to just overheat, you would think they put a temperature gauge in the car. The only thing you have is a little light that comes on that says, hey, your engine's too hot, and then it's too late. Kind of aggravating. Um, I believe in the new minis, they went back to an actual uh, water temp gauge or coolant temperature gauge. Just frustrating, you know? So now, all four parts of my Mini Cooper coolant system have been replaced. I do apologize, I didn't do the other videos on those. I was just getting started on YouTube. Hindsight's 2020, I should have, but hopefully this helped someone a little bit, at least, you know what I mean? All right, guys, that's all I got for today. This weekend will be fun because we're going to get my wife a brand new car at the same dealer I bought my C8s. It's a brand new model, a 2024, so you guys will see it probably Sunday. So I'll catch you guys then. Mark out.